Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and I'm a programmer and an artist. And today I've got an update to my Geometry Nodes um, asset collection, which is available on Gumroad. And this update's all about UVs. It adds uh, these five nodes here, and um, let's take a look at them. One thing I want to make a note of before I dive into each of these nodes is that um, they're sort of quick automatic solutions for if you just wanted a quick and dirty UV map. They're, um, if you want a perfect solution where all the seams are, you know, placed in ideal locations and stuff, then you're going to have to apply your modifiers probably and manually unwrap it. Um, and this will work great if you have like a perfect cube or a perfect cylinder, um, or it's just like a pretty flat terrain, then the planer could work really well. Um, but beyond, you know, the further away from the ideal case for each of these unwrapping methods you get, the less perfect they're going to be. So I'll try to so show some of those situations where it doesn't work so well, but um, but yeah, if you have a simple case or a mesh that uh, is pretty cylindric or pretty much like a cube or something like that, then these could work really well. Um, but the more away from those ideal cases you get, the more likely you're going to have weird seams and stuff like that. Also, you can't, with like the triplanar, you can't do any blending because we're doing this on the geometry. Um, so there's always going to be seams. Um, anyway, the first one we should look at is the UV map planar because it's the simplest. Um, it just takes the position of the vertices and then it discards one of the axes and takes the other two as your U and V coordinates. Um, so this one here is set up with uh, the Z axis as the one that gets discarded, so we have x is the x or um, x is the u axis, and then y is the v axis. And um, we could change that so that y was sort of the way we're. This is like using project from view if you use um, if you're in edit mode. Um, anyway, the node itself, you can give the, your UV map a name. Then uh, you choose the axis. You can control the scale. Um, you can see if we turn this down that both of these are unwrapped like on top of each other, like this. If you um, if you don't want that, or like you have a floor where you have a bunch of tiles or something and you want to map each of them to different part of a stone texture or something, then this island random value will offset each island to a different location from the other ones. Um, so then they get different parts of the texture. And then the, um, or, you can skip the scale in the island random and you can pack the UVs inside the zero to one range um, and you can choose a margin for that. As far as the node itself goes and what's in here, um, for this planar one, to, you could just add the position into the named attribute and that would be like a most basic version of the, um, the node. But you don't have any axis control, you don't have any scale control, you don't have the random island stuff. Um, but that's the essence of what we're doing, and then we just have some fancy features on top of it. Um, some other things we do is we um, accumulate fields to calculate the average position of each mesh island, and then we um, subtract the we subtract that from the position of all the vertices so that they all move to the so the center of each island moves to zero zero essentially. Um, and then the, the island is around zero, zero. And then, um, so that looks like this. Um, so that just keeps all the UVs sort of nice and neat and in the same location. Um, all of this is just to do with what axis we want to use. Um, this random value is for the, the island random that is as an offset. Here we got the scale. Um, uh, this center UV islands node takes the UVs, which look like this where you can see the random offset has pushed them away. And if you turn this way up, they can be, you'd, your UVs would be weird and you'd have parts of it off in the middle of nowhere. So what center UV islands does is it just, it basically says, well, if you're at 10.5, well, 10.5 is the same as 0 0.5 because the UV space repeats every time. So it'll just calculate where that UV island is and then move it so that it's, closer to the zero to one range or snap it as close as possible to that. So that just looks like this, but um, the texture itself wouldn't change at all. 
And then here we just have a pack UV Islands node, which is an optional thing. And that's the same for all of these nodes. They all have basically the same features, just different ways of calculating the UVs. So then I guess the second node we have, you can see here, is the UV map viewer. You just tell it the name of a UV map that you want to view. It can be either an actual UV map on a mesh or it can be an attribute UV map that you create with nodes or something. And then if you view it, it makes this one by one grid plane with a UV material on it. And then it displays the UV map you picked over top of that um, in the 3D viewport. So you can just, because if you wanted to view it in the UV editor, you'd have to apply all your nodes and sometimes that's not ideal. And then um, you can scale it up too if you want. So then the UV map triplanar is basically just the UV map planar times three, where it'll do a planar projection from the X, the Y, and the Z axis, and then pick which of those is best suited for a particular face based on the face's normal orientation. So if a face's normal is pointing more up than it is uh, forward or side or to the right, then it will get the Z projection. But if it's facing more to the right, it'll get the X projection. So here you can see an example, since this cube's rotated a random amount, this face here got projected different than the ones near it, and you can see the stretching and stuff. Um, as long as the object is sort of axis aligned, like this cube is, it'll work really well. Um, but the more, like the monkey here, everything's weird. You get all sorts of random shaped islands. Um, so that's not so great. But if it's sort of a cube-like shape, um, or even a, a regular sort of sphere, it does work pretty well. Although you do get, um, you will get seams. So watch out for that. As far as the node options, you got the name again, you can scale everything again, you can offset each island again, um, and you can also pack the UVs. Then we have cylindric UV mapping. Um, so again, here we have the, the UV map name, and then we have the axis, so this cylinder is aligned on the z-axis. Um, you can scale the UVs, you can stretch the UVs, you can add an offset um, to sort of rotate the UVs around the cylinder. Then you can rotate the caps. You can scale the caps independently from the... So the, the cap scale only affects the caps. The scale affects the caps and the, cylinder, the cylindric part of the UV as well. So you can use this cap scale if you need to try to match the uh, size of the, the texel density of the caps to the um, cylindric part of it. And then you can add a random offset to each mesh island. And then this tweak seam value is for where there's somewhere there's going to be a seam. If you set tweak seam to zero, you'll get this one face where it spans the entire texture as it goes from you know, 350 to zero degrees, essentially. So what we can do is add a tiny bit of the face normal to the vertex corners position to sort of nudge it a little bit one way or the other so that the, uh, so the angle doesn't loop back from 360 to zero. So that just increase that a little bit and it should fix it. Um, the value is kind of fidgety, so this more complex shape here, um, it doesn't work with this value. You have to pick like a negative value because it's concave. Um, anyway. And then again, you can also pack the UVs instead of um, having them be overlapping. And I, I think I said, but with the planar, the triplanar, and the cylindric, the packing doesn't change the orientation of the UVs. It's still the UV map that was created originally. It just fits them all into the 0 to 1 range. The cylindric mapping works on each individual mesh island. So if you have multiple meshes in here, um, or, I mean, it's one mesh, but if you have multiple sort of objects inside of that mesh, then this one will be calculated with this as the center point, and this one will use this as the center point, and uh, this one will use this as the center point. Um, what it doesn't work with is if you have the... Um, if you rotate something off the axis, so as long as there's a slight rotation, it'll still work okay. But you will get weird, um, I mean, the 
the texture is still going to be aligned with the axis, so that can look kind of weird. And then if you rotate it too far, everything kind of gets wonky. So it works best if you have a cylindric shape and it's aligned with the axis that you pick um, here. Uh, then we have the automatic UV map node, which um, just uses the standard, where is it, UV unwrap node. And that looks like this, but I added a few extra options to it. Um, once again, you can give it a name and it creates the vector attribute for you. And then um, if you have a mesh like this, oops, if you have a mesh like this, so one thing you might do if you're gonna unwrap this manually is you might select these edges here and make those a seam. Oops, you might make those a seam. And then you might select these and make those a seam. And then that would un unwrap okay if you had it like that. The auto unwrap node um, automatically uses the edge angle to determine where to split, kind of like the, um, what's it called, the smart UV project a little bit. Obviously that can create more islands in your UV map than you actually want. So then you can see that looks like this by default and there's all these little tiny pieces and that's because um, these edges here would also be seams based on the edge angle because they're sharp. Um, so in order to try to replicate this seam pattern, instead of including these other top edges, what we'll do is can take we can look at the face normal, and if the face normal points in a direction, we can not include those as seams. Um, I imagine if you rotated this 45 degrees, it wouldn't work so well. But so you can see what that does here. If you skip axis aligned, it makes um, it puts the sides connected to the top essentially. And then because the Blender UV Unwrap node can put some islands facing a different direction from the rest because they fit better that way, um, I have this option to make the long edge align to the V-axis, which you can um, check and then all of the islands, um, as long as they're a little bit stretched and not perfectly square, then it can align all of the islands to face the same direction. So those are my new UV nodes. Um, I've added them to my asset collection. Um, these are all the nodes in my geometry nodes collection. Uh, that's available on Gumroad, um, including the new UV nodes, which I just added. And then um, if you can give me something for them, that'd be great. And otherwise, um, they're available for free. So yeah, that's all I've got for this one. Um, thanks for watching.